David Bradley Sr. Here. Mr. Stephen Holland. Here. Mrs. Gail Mulholland. Here. Mr. Wayne Wentz. Here. Mr. Andrew Yenser. Here. Mr. Larry Sir. Here. Eight present. As of the recess of December 4th, we left a meeting with a motion and a second on the floor for a non-binary school board. Any discussion by the board? Ms. Wagner, roll we'll call vote. Uh, please, I have some discussion for the copy of the real agenda. Sorry. So the motion was on by who? Ms. Wagner, remember? Yes, the motion was by Mr. Stern and the second was by Mr. Wentz. Okay. Hang on one second, please. of the citizens and the students of this district, we as a board 
in good faith cannot allow such a man to sit on this board. Let's now look at why this town kicked this guy to the curb and actions as a board member. During his tenure, he never motioned to fix the safety items of an existing school, which is a violation of our policy of school code. That policy says we're supposed to maintain our schools. Those maintenance items, as listed in the feasibility study, included safety items. And they never, he never motioned, many on this board never motioned, under the guidelines of our policy, to fix those safety items. He also did not motion for a referendum. Now, where it was almost not legally required, there was definitely a town that asked for it. He also raised taxes when we had a surplus. Dwayne Item didn't motion to pay off the existing high interest debt with the cash we had bearing little interest. We all just witnessed that there was a box on top of that four foot by four foot cube representing $100 bills stacked four feet high, four feet wide by four feet wide. That's how much debt we're in now. And that little box on the top is how much debt we were in prior to the actions of people like Dwayne Item and some of the recumbent board, income board. Therefore, this man's action shows lack of the most basic financial management skills to serve on a board. This board voted to renovate, and we had done what the people had wanted. The town voted this man off the board. We need academic excellence and financial savvy members on this board. I think we all agree with that. For a person to motion to not only give back some of the taxpayers' overpayment and to motion to spend money to remove educational programs, it's just too much to ask of this town after you already taxed them to near extinction. I strongly submit my vote of no confidence to Dwayne Item for his demonstrated inability to follow Pennsylvania state law, school code, and our own district policy. I then would like to yield the floor for Pennsylvania Sunshine Act number 710 to the citizens of this town. At your discretion, Mr. Sturman. You had your chance and you stated what your issue was with Mr. Adam. There was no point in that we had discussed to include citizens in the voice of representing or unrepresenting an individual. So at this time, I'd like to call for a vote. Before you do, let me caution you that violating Pennsylvania Sunshine Act 65 PA 67 701 to 716, section 710.1, and reference to public meetings. Are you going to violate that today? Let's start over. I move that we motion to remove Larry Stern from this board for actions in violation of his own. Can I get a second on that motion? There's a motion on the floor. This supersedes that for your violation of not letting people speak. I'll second that motion. Would anyone in the public like to have a statement for that motion, because we have a motion and a second on the floor, and Larry has not obligated his oath of office to allow the public to speak. Mr. Bradley, Mr. Stern just asked, Mr. Stern, asked me for an opinion. This Mr. Stern does not have the right to ask you. If he wants his own personal lawyer, he can hire one. You're a lawyer for the district, Mr. Stern. Right for the benefit of the right district, either go to executive session and give the advice to the entire board or, as a district solicitor, you are hired by the district. And if you're going to share your information with the entire board, we can do it here or in executive session. We can do it right here. Sounds great. I look forward to it. Okay. When you're talking about an open, uh, an open meeting under the Sunshine Law, we have to have a time for public participation on the agenda. If this was a new meeting, there would have had to be a time before the meeting 
to allow the public to speak. We're not in that. This was recessed by the chair. This is the same meeting from December 4th where the public was afforded an opportunity to talk on the reorganization issue. At the end of this meeting, there should be another time for the public to speak. So my position reading the 65 uh, consolidated statutes is that this is the same meeting we had December 4th. There was public input at that point. You may disagree with it. You're free to disagree with I, it. I can see you're correct. Five members of the board are free to disregard my advice. Four members, of, you know, but you need a Let, Let's try this all for size. I agree that the words you just said are correct, but they are irrelevant to what I suggested. And let me read to you what the statute says. General rule, public participation, 710.1. I checked with the state, by the way, and they gave me the same reading. But first of all, that's, that's, that's not the statute. That's, that, a, that's a regulation of the statute. And it says, but you can check the statute, it says that both the taxpayers and the board have to have a right to comment on matters of concern, of official action or deliberation, which are or may be before the board or council prior to taking action. So I can see that at the beginning of the meeting, you had a public comment for things on the agenda. When this motion was not listed on that agenda, it became a new item, and as a new item, prior to its execution of government by this board, those people have a right to speak. You're right. Correct. And as such, that man has violated his oath regularly, including last meeting, this meeting, and without any understanding, we have given him warning after warning. We gave him a reprimand more than 10 days ago. And according to, hold on, my motion and a second that's currently on the floor to remove Larry Stern from this board for actions in violation of his oath. The policy states that he may be removed from office with prior notice which we gave an affirmation vote of the majority of the remaining board members. Said notice was provided by a letter of reprimand on December 6th, whereas school policy has been treated in the past, as our solicitor so eloquently said, as a guideline, I would submit that an oath of office, not unlike the oath taken by our servicemen and many people in this community, is more than a guideline. The community needs persons of character of this board. His ignorance of the law, like his arrogance with the gavel, is not an excuse to violate the rights of the constituents or violate the oath or violate the law set forth by this commonwealth. He took an oath, and within an hour of taking an oath, after years of being on this board, this man chose to violate that. And that is a gross misconduct. My motion stands. We have a second. I suggest we take the vote, if we're not going to do executive session, with the remaining school board members and decide whether he gets removed from office. If you'd like to go further, I have a whole list of other violations that this man has done within the district to the people in this community. The community would be best served with the enforcement by the way, the enforcement of state law, whereas ignorance of this law is not a legal defense, and this avenue has been exhausted because these board members were informed of the Sunshine Act upon acceptance of office. This action is about restoring the order to the community and moving forward with lawful proceedings. in charge. Do you want to take a vote on that motion? Why are you president? No, he's been removed. No, he hasn't. There's not been a vote of five people to remove. I you agree. can't do anything with just one person saying remove. You need five votes for that. Actually, it's the remaining board. So let's take a vote it, for it, the it, remaining board. They'll look at the it, code. Keep paging. You'll find it. I'm here to help you. Well, then what section
section of the school code you're referring to because Excellent. normally we do not, a school district does not have a power to remove a school director. When they have grossly misused their power, the answer is 100%. And this, the courts have said basically that's when they don't show up for meetings. And unfortunately... But in this case, this man, under your supervision, violated state law, multiple state laws, multiple violations and that charge a criminal code for such violations. And can you, I've asked you before when you made your wild allegations to be specific, you have time, date, and specific instance, and you've refused to on repeated cases. Actually, Bill, I offered it to you twice, including I offered my consultation services for your benefit. And practicing law without a license for two fifty an hour for a minimum four hours? Actually, I'm just a consultant. I'm not practicing law. I'm teaching you to read, sir. I'm teaching you to read. Well, uh, my and the responsibility is so. the school board does not have the power based on the issues you've said to remove any other director. You have the right to remove Mr. Stern by majority vote of five as president. Hold on. Here you go. Ready? If, in attendance at any meeting, neglects or refuses to act in his or her office official capacity as a school director, may be removed from his or her office for the, with prior notice on the affirmative vote of the majority of the remaining members of the board, sir. And that if the person elected or appointed have been notified, they shall refuse to elect to qualify for such the director. So. With his violation, he no longer can act as that school board member because this group of nine people, eight now, seven because of his actions. You have my rule like, and you don't have the authority. That section of the school code has been neglect, has been interpreted as being missing to board meetings. I'm interpreting it as a neglect of oath of office. And as you have said before, the policy is a function of the people within the meeting and the majority or quorum and such that we have. So we have a quorum of seven people, and those seven people can take a vote of whether this man that has violated his oath of office should still have a seat. You don't have the right to take the right to I, Mr. Stern away. Why? Why? He violated his oath. He took it away. I didn't take it away. He may want to abstain, but you he took it away. Make a decision he took it unilaterally away. without the whole entire board. If you have five votes and Mr. Stern abstains, no problem. But you can't disenfranchise him on your say so. I and didn't say it on my say so. I said I make a motion. We have a second, and according to the school policy and code and Pennsylvania state law, when he violated his oath, he no longer is a school member. But you're making a conclusion before you said he violated the law as well. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. You said he has to have this opportunity to I, speak. I said, yeah, but that's and on not December right. fourth, hold on. On December fourth, relax. On December fourth, when we had a motion for Richard Bellis, you cannot vote. On December fourth, I'll protest it. On December fourth, that's fine. But it's, it's your right, it's your opinion. But on December 4th, Mr. Stern violated Section 710 of the Sunshine Violation when he refused to let the public speak prior to taking a vote of action for I Richard Belts. If I recall, we let Mr. Belts speak and we let his representation speak. I would agree you let two people speak, but the law says, Larry, you have the whole. Can I speak? Can I speak? Sure. Mr. Houser spoke at the time. So what, what I don't recall is any other members asking for the permission to speak. Yet, yeah, did Was you activate it? Ms. Meigner and anyone else respect, requested to speak before recess. Let's see if we have anyone else here that knows the people that wanted to speak. I wanted to speak. I'm Fran Flickier wanted to speak. That lady wanted to speak, right? This lady wanted to speak and they had their hands raised. You ignored them in violation of Pennsylvania State Sunshine Law, sir. Which would you like to go first? The one to remove me or the one from Mr. Ike? You cannot vote, and we will have that one to remove you. I have that I can vote. My opinion is until court disenfranchises him, 
he has a right to vote. Then we should recess until the court can realize what is important because your reading of this law and your reading from this board has been slanted, Mr. Sterbswab. We have found it to be an error. And once we get once we get Larry off the board, we have a majority. We can maybe change solicitors that cannot err for years, years, sir, on this violation.